Hello and welcome to our practice problems for chapter 9. So we're going to get right into this. Once again, making sure you've gone over this before, have a little idea, we're going to keep the um, uh, content moving throughout the video. All right, so number one, um, a standard deviation for t distribution is exactly equal to 1. This is false. Um, um, turn this all on. It is false. Uh, <clears throat> the only way it's exactly equal to 1 is when we're dealing with a z distribution. When we're dealing with t's, remember our tails are a little fatter because we're, most of the time we're dealing with very small sample sizes. Number two um, is going to be true. Once again, um, the key parts here is small differences between two uh, population proportions for significantly large sample sizes. Um, if there's a small difference between two populations or two um, entities that you're measuring against, no matter how small the difference is, the more people you have, the more likely it is that you're going to find um, uh, that it actually is a very true difference. Uh, it could be very small, um, but once again, the more samples you have, that small difference becomes a lot bigger in general. Um, so it's likely to be rejected. For number three here, um, most of the time we're looking at when we have a T and underscore, uh, comma, another, uh, another value. So uh, this is set up as T as our degrees of freedom. So our degrees of freedom is found by taking N minus 1. So truly there's an end of 11, but n minus 1 gives us just degrees of freedom, so it's 10. And then comma, this, and this is going to be the cumulative probability that we find um, in, in the back of the book here. So if you find a cumulative probability of 0.95, now remember this isn't going to be a two-tail test. This is going to be cumulative probability, and that's not taking in two-tail. It's just cumulative. So you have to think of that word cumulative, so it's going to be from like negative infinity to that value. Uh, 0.95, so that's a one-tailed test. So when we find our degrees of freedom, use a one-tailed test um, to find uh, where our cumulative probability is. So when we go to the table in the back, we do a degrees of freedom, found majority of the time on the left-hand side there, you go to degrees of freedom 10, find our cumulative probability of 0.95, that's going to be our one-tailed. Remember, it's not going to be two-tailed, it's going to be one-tailed, and we're doing cumulative 0.95. You'll find our t-value, so this is kind of like what is our t percentile, or what is our t critical value at this particular value um, that it's equal to? What is the t value here? And it's going to be 1.812. And then we're doing the same thing for number four, except we're just changing degrees of freedom. Find your degrees of freedom, find the cumulative probability, and then so what t percentile, or what t critical value um, is that using the table, and you find that to be 2.624. Moving on um, to number five, um, that we're comparing a t-distribution to a standard uh, normal uh, distribution. And what we say is that as the degrees of freedom increase, the t-distribution portrays the standard normal. Most of the time, this is around 30 individuals. N of 30, if you look at um, N of 30, so your degrees of freedom in a t-table would be like 29. As it increases from there, you'll and you compare that value to a z, you'll see that they're very, very similar. And as you increase n, they get even more and more um, closer to each other. Number six is we're just testing out um, a, a null and alternative hypothesis here after reading it. And uh, it, we're shown that that it's not a two-tail test because we're going to want to be greater than 40 um, milligrams Hg here. Uh, so when, when, when we're looking at that, our alternative hypothesis is going to be greater than 40, and we're measuring against two different things. So we're going to have our mu of delta. Uh, so if we're looking at our uh, mu of delta, so we're going to take automatically A and B out of it because those aren't giving us the delta. We're just looking at the difference between um, these uh, two groups here, so we're going to be using mu of delta, that's mu of delta right there, and then we know that we want a, our alternative hypothesis to be greater than 40, which is what it stated here. The answer C, D has not equal to 40, which is going to be a two-tailed test, and we don't want a two-tailed test on this one. Number seven here, uh, once again, we're also setting up um, our hypothesis statement here uh, between um, freshmen and sophomores stating where they are, and it's just about reading um, the verbiage in here uh, that the professor claims to mean uh, that uh, a sophomore spend time uh, studying versus that of a freshman. Um, 
is is going to be different, but how is it different? And it, you know, are we setting up equal to, greater than, less than, and not equal to? And uh, we're going to state that the uh, sophomores are going to study more than freshmen, and freshmen are going to be your mu sub one, and sophomores mu sub two, and sophomores are going to um, study more. So we're set up as B. Number eight here. Once again, we're also just setting up um, a hypothesis statements and looking at the verbiage in there to set it up. And key key one here is we're looking at a two-tailed one-sample t-test. Um, and if we look at all our null hypothesis here, only one of them is a two-tailed, and that's going to be D. And if we look through everything else, that is how we're going to set it up. Um, of course, you could look at this, you know, um, with certain limits um, and, and maybe. Uh, trying to look more into it, but just look at what, it, what it's asking you. We're looking for just a two-sided one-sample t-test, and only one of these answers give a two-sided uh, one-sample t-test. Number nine here is getting a little bit more into um, the actual math of it. Um, so for here, we are uh, trying to set up a confidence interval um, for mu using two um, independent samples and our values for these independent samples are given here. So once again, you can go through the book and find um, our formula and write it out. And I'm gonna kind of write it over here to the side where we're, what we're trying to find is, you know, the um, mu of one minus mu of two plus or minus really our E, um, which, you know, it's kind of like our confidence interval. What is our value? And mu of one minus mu of two, um, is going uh, to be our, you know, just our x bars subtracting from each other, which is going to give us a value of 801. So if you want to say it's 801 plus or minus our e, e is equal to the t of alpha over 2. So this is kind of like our, our critical value. What um, What's our t value at the 85% confidence interval? So our alpha will be um, 0.15, uh, and we can go from there, find it, um, multiply that by the square root of the variance of group one or the standard deviation squared all over the n of group one plus the variance square uh, the variance of group two or the standard deviation squared group two over n of two n um, for both of these is the same value and if you work this out you can get um, your answer uh, it's going to be kind of hard using the book just because of the 85 percent but once again use your calculator if you go uh, in your calculator and you go to your test, you can go to a two sample, um, uh, two sample independent uh, t test here and uh, input all the values here and you know uh, save yourself a lot of time. Um, once again, that's going to stat test um, and a TI 83, you're going to be going to uh, the zero, a two sample t interval here, um, plug in your values and then you'll be able to see that the correct answer is C. So. Um, also use your calculator as a means to check your work if you're doing it by hand or a great way just to use technology going forward. Number 10 here, um, after reading uh, this interval, we're trying to determine you know, whether male babies are larger or females or there's no difference. Key thing to look at here is if you have a negative value on one side and a positive value here, and we're subtracting really the two, right? We're trying to see like, uh, you know, if we go kind of up to number nine here, we're trying to see where these values fall from. And with having a negative value on one side, we're stating that uh, if you were to take male and female babies and find the difference that sometimes when you said a female baby will be longer than a male baby, not always. And we say on average, male babies are longer than female babies, but not always, right? There's some female babies that are born longer than male babies. There's sometimes there's small male babies compared to a, a larger female baby. The female baby will be uh, Longer, so that's what this negative two is implying. That depending on you know what samples and what individuals you get to, that female babies might be longer than male babies, and comparing those two, so you can't expressively state that male babies are larger. That's kind of an all statement, or female babies are larger. Not all female babies or not all male babies, comparing the gender, are one-sided. That really the answer is C. Is there is no difference in length because our confidence interval states that. You know, sometimes when you compare males and female babies, you're going to get a negative value, meaning that the females are going to be longer than males. Number 11, also kind of taking into uh, consider uh, a bunch of things. So we're really trying to find um, mu of delta um, here, and we're giving our, uh, our, our 
samples, and when we're finding delta, we're doing like a match pair pre-post test that we're comparing it to. So we're taking our x minus our y, and we're coming up with a whole column of delta. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this in the calculator. You can actually just subtract them out yourself. Um, you can put in the um, values of x in one list, the values of y in one list, and then make another list, subtract them out for you. Or you can do it by hand and input that list. Um, any way you do it, you should get a value of your delta list is going to be 2, 4, negative 6, 0, negative 1, negative 5, 0, and 1. And then from that list, you can now find your average delta, which would be negative 0.625. You can find your standard deviation of delta here, which would be uh, sorry 3.3779, our end value equaling n. And then when we run our t-test, you can run it in and run a, a, a t-test here um, and get your answer. You can run it yourself, taking your um, x bar minus mu all over the standard area of x and get your t-value. And when you do it, you should get a t-value of negative uh, 0.523. You can do it in the calculator or by hand, um, you, utilizing whatever resources are around you um, that you best uh, can use all the time. Moving on, so we're going to move on to number 12. Uh, so number 12 here, we're looking at um, the decision for rejecting a null hypothesis given a bunch of data and information. So we're given uh, a sample size, we're giving an alpha level, and we're given a test statistic here. Um, and then based on that, we're utilizing what we know. Um, when we go through this, we're going to determine that C is the correct answer. We're going to reject the null hypothesis if the test statistic is greater than 2.624. So what we're doing here is we're, we're finding our critical value of t. So remember, when we're trying to find critical value of t, our t is going to be n minus 1, so our degrees of freedom, to our cumulative probability. And if we look at this up, um, it would be t of 14, the cumulative probability of 0.99, and then we'll get our test statistic from there, um, and then determine that we can reject an hypothesis if our, if our value is greater than that um, critical value, which is what we're determining. If normal the time, if our t critical value, uh, if our t value is greater than our critical value, um, our p value is going to be less than the alpha because we found significance there, and we're going to warrant rejection of the null hypothesis. Kind of doing very uh, similar things here for uh, number thirteen, where we're given our delta, our uh, average, our standard deviation of delta n, and we're given our null hypothesis. So how would we determine the ruling here, and we're going to go D, we're going to reject null hypothesis if the test statistic is greater than 1.415. Once again, this is really just finding that critical value, and once you find that critical value, you're then going to see if your value is greater than that, and that's how our alternative hypothesis is set up. If our value is greater than that or less than a certain value, then we're going to find significance at particular alpha level. Um, so you're just setting up finding that T value um, using the table on the back, um, using the degrees of freedom and cumulative probability, and then finding out um, where we are right uh, at that moment for that critical value. And then if we our t value is greater than that, we're going to find significance at alpha level. If it's less than that, then we're not going to find significance at that particular alpha level. And that is going to do it for this particular uh, video. I will pick back up uh, the next video going over more the practice problems and writing out our hypothesis statement. I'll see you all in the next video.